You know, one of the hopes that I have in this life is that we understand the message of the cross. This week is one of those special weeks. It's the Passion Week. It's the week where in the Jewish tradition they're celebrating the Passover. You'll find that we as Christians have all the symbols that we go through the Old Testament. And even as you see this of the cross, I appreciate this message in this today. Because one of the things that I know, and you know, those of us that are sitting here, they're Christians, without the cross, there is no message. Without the message of Christ being sacrificed for us, a, a sermon-wise, I named this the substitute. One of the things that anytime you have something that is substitute, it's usually not as good. But in this case, we have Christ, who is our substitute. You go back in the Old Testament, you'll look at the Passover in Exodus where it says that it was all instituted this week of the Passover was that one of those scriptures that you have there in Genesis, right in Exodus, when it starts in Exodus, it says at a time where the new king of Egypt came along and had forgotten or did not know who Joseph was. They just couldn't understand that why all these Jews were here, and so he decided to enslave them even more. And so when God raised up Moses, and everything that Moses did, and all through what he was doing as far as the sacrificial and, and the sacrificial system that God had set up, it was all about the substitute that was to come. And as we listen to the stories, and we see the stories in the Old Testament, and you look at Moses when you had the ten plagues, every one of those plagues were to knock down one of the gods of Egypt. Every one of those plagues did not touch the Israelites. Every one of those plagues that you'll find until you get to the last one, and that's where death was coming in. It was going to take the firstborn. Some say, how in the world? That's a cruel God and everything. God has every right to the firstborn, but he also has every right to do what God wants to do. And as he's doing judgments, any way along the way, any one of those judgments could have brought about repentance to Pharaoh's heart, but it did not. And so this week we celebrate the Passover. The Passover was that time where they were supposed to take that perfect male lamb. Every family was supposed to have one. Here's the good news. The one families that did not have that availability, they could have shared it with their neighbor. And, you know, I find it fascinating as I look back on the Passover and I see as Jesus, as he celebrated the Passover in this Passion Week, and as he was celebrating that, he was showing them, he's saying, look, here's exactly what is to come. Here is the substitute that was coming to stand in. But substitute for what? The lamb back in the Old Testament was that substitute for us, that substitute for the death angel to come in and take their firstborn. They said you're to sacrifice this and you're to take that lamb and you're to take that blood and you're supposed to put it at the post of it and take a hiss up and you're supposed to paint the post of your door. And whenever the death angel came along and would see that painted there, that was a statement of faith. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The fascinating part that I find in the Old Testament was everything in the Old Testament was pointing to Christ, everything that we experience as a Christian. My conversation this last week with a gentleman who was a Buddhist, I find it so, I've been reflecting a good bit on that conversation because I, I look at no hope in some of these religions. But then try to explain how the blood is that of our sacrifice. And even a substitute of somebody standing in. How in the world can that save you? How did that lamb save the, Israel, the Egyptians and the Israelites and have judgment go upon the Egyptians that night? How did that happen? And you find it said when the death angel would come and he would see that blood that was painted along the doorpost as that was painted there, he would pass over knowing that there was no one to take in that home because they had made a statement of faith. What I look at in the Old Testament, and I see this celebration of Passover, and I see this week of what we celebrate as Easter. We look at this and we say, God, you're such an awesome God. I see the cross that we have even celebrating here today. And I think about that one fellow this past week as I spoke to him. There is no hope. He gets to purgatory. Maybe he gets out as something else in their religion. He gets to this place of separated from God. There is no hope. And so in my end, trying to explain to someone else, and it's hard because you as a Christian, you kind of understand. You've had some Bible knowledge, and you kind of understand what the substitute is all about. The substitute is that person that's got to come in and stand in for you. There's nothing better. I tell you, if I ever was put into an 18-round match or a 10-round match with if you get some of the, the boxing greats, I want a substitute. 
I can't handle it. You put me in there with Mike Tyson, give me a substitute. Give me somebody else. Give me Cajun. He can be my substitute. He can take a beating and keep going. I have no options. You go back to Genesis, you'll find that it, the soul that sins dies. You'll see it in Genesis, and you'll see the work up all the way. And even when we get to seeing the Israelites who were taken into captivity because that Pharaoh that came along, the king that came along, forgot all about Joseph, didn't understand who he was, even why these people were here, so he enslaved them. But that was just a type and symbol of the enslavement of what sin has done to every one of us. Without the remission, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Because you know what? Every one of us, because we have sin that comes short of the glory of God, our lives should be taken. Because sin kills, and sin brings about death. And because death has come, there's got to be some solution. Because when the death angel passes over, there's got to be some kind of hope. Something somewhere. Your sins have to be paid for with your blood. Because you've sinned. I've sinned. Our sins are there. They speak against us. I don't care. You might think I've got just little sins compared to you name a who. Charles Manson. Pick him. I just got little sins. My sins are not that great. But the Bible says the soul that sins surely dies. Without the shedding of blood, there is no payment for sin. There's got to be some substitute. When you see in the Old Testament, you'll see time and time again God pointing to that substitute. You can look at the rock when the wilderness, when they were thirsty, and he said, you strike the rock. And you know the fascinating thing is the water flowed. And that was a type and symbol of Jesus. The next time they got thirsty and he struck the rock, then that's when Moses got in trouble because he angrily did that. And you're only going to strike that rock once of a type and symbol. You remember the snakes coming out and eating the grumblers? You think about that some morning, you wake up grumpy. Remember how they came out and they started eating and Moses had the revelation from God and he said, if you'll just put one of these snakes and you'll lift that snake up and put it on the bronze pole, you'll lift that snake up and he said, anyone who will look upon that snake, they can be healed because that is a type and symbol of the sin that was put upon the cross. If you look in the Old Testament time and time again, it points to the substitute that is to come because there's none of one of us that are righteous. None of us. None of us can pay for our sins. None of us have the ability to say, look, I can do this. And talking to that gentleman who was of another religion, and I was telling him, I said, there's no hope that you have because you can't get yourself out. Your hope to get out of purgatory is to build up enough good karma, enough good works. Jesus even tells us our works are not any good. We can see in Scripture they're like filthy rags. Anything we try to do, and we say if there's a substitute, we can substitute our works, we can substitute our good deeds, we can substitute our words. But Jesus says, no, I've already pointed to the substitute that's coming. You can see in the Old Testament time and time again, even you'll see in John where Jesus says, the Son of Man must be lifted up. He said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Why is the cross important? Why is even our understanding of that cross important? Because we look back that without that, Shedding of blood. You look at the perfect lamb that was shed in order to have the Passover celebration so the death angel would not touch. Listen to me, folks. Every one of us are going to die. And you know why you're going to die? It's because of sin. Every one of us. Because we have all sinned. And because sin came into this world, that was the separation with God. God cannot have sin in his presence. And what it takes is for someone to lay their lives down and Jesus said, no greater love than someone lay their lives down. Someone may would lay their lives down for a good person, but how about us who are sinners? We did not deserve it. But all through the Old Testament, you'll see the substitute was to come. All through the Old Testament, you'll see, even in the wilderness, every one of the types and shadows you'll see in the wilderness is pointing to that, that substitute that is to come. This week, as we celebrate this, you'll see the Maundy Thursday, Good Friday. You'll see Easter next week. All that is pointing, and we look at it, and we go, our hope is in Christ. Every one of us sitting here today deserved death. All of us did. If you're perfect here today, you can raise your hand. But there's not a hand that can be raised because every one of us have sinned. Some of us probably did it on the way into church today. 
Some of us may have did it last week. Some of us, and all those sins separate us from God. The big gulf that God did span was the promise of the substitute to come. When I look at the cross, and we look at that cross, and we get so many emotions, so many things about that cross, and as we start looking at it, how does blood save you because somebody had to pay for our sins? And when we say we're saved by the blood, we're saved because of the substitute that came in our stead. Just like I would never stand across from Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali and expect to win that. I don't expect to get out of this place alive because of my sins. But I can tell you this because of the substitute that came. Because of the Son of God who came into this world and he was perfect without blemish. He had no sin in him. Sin is traced down through the bloodline and the bloodline was given by God through Mary. And so we find that we, every one of us that are in need of that perfect sacrifice, in order to get to heaven, the only way you can get there is you've got to have somebody to pay for your sins. Somebody. The way it worked is a Passover lamb was sacrificed and that blood was applied to the door. You've got to shave kind of a cross. And, and you'll find as that blood was a pip on the door frame, and as that was there, it said that the death angel would come and just look past and see that death couldn't touch them. Folks, I want to tell you, ours is by the same kind of fate today in the substitute that was given. I wasn't that there that day 2,000 years ago when they put Jesus upon that cross. You can watch the Mel Gibson film and you can watch as the sacrifice is taking place and if a tear doesn't come to your eye, then you're pretty hard-hearted. If you look at that and you kind of go, boy, that's almost like being there, but it's not there. But 2,000 years ago, when he looked down in all of history and he looked at you and he says, it is for you because there's no way you'll ever escape this life alive and there's no way you'll ever stand before God and say, look, I am innocent because every one of us are guilty and it's because of the blood and I'm telling you, the judgment that came to Egypt with the death angel and when the firstborn was taken out of all livestock, of all human beings and firstborn was wiped out there in Egypt, just the same as the judgment is coming for each one of us because of our sins. But the good news is the substitute is there for us. Substitutes for every person in here. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, his blood was shed. And because he was the perfect lamb without sin, he said, I will stand in your stead upon this cross because the cross was for us. And you say, but that just seems kind of easy for us. All we have to do, folks, I'm going to tell you something. Think back of the Passover. Think when the death angel came. It just seems too easy. It was easy for everybody but the lamb. They were eating a good meal off the lamb. They were eating a good meal sitting in that home after the blood had been applied. You'll see all the types and shadows that go on with the Passover, and it happens this week. I'm going to tell you, it was easy for everybody but the lamb. You say, oh, it's kind of easy for us. We seem like we ought to have to pay for something. Folks, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. For those who have faith in Jesus Christ, or those who put their faith that Jesus Christ lived 2,000 years ago, he died upon the cross for our sins, and because his blood was shed, that blood speaks volumes for our substitute and our argument that, yes, we are sinners, but we have been forgiven. It's because of that blood. When somebody tells you you're saved by the blood, and I guess all this came about as I was talking to this fellow of the other religion, and I'm like, we say terms a lot of times where saved by the blood means nothing to anyone else. And when I say I'm saved by the blood, I'm saved by that one who stood in my stead. And he died for my sins. Somebody had to die. And you know what? It had to be a perfect lamb to be given. And since that perfect lamb, Jesus Christ, came for each one of us, my challenge to you this week, share it with a neighbor. The lamb is worth being shared. And you know, the great thing is every one of us have the hope of Easter. All of us in here, sitting here today have the hope of Easter. If you don't understand what it means to have the blood of Jesus to forgive you of your sins, what it means is you accept the substitutionary death that Jesus Christ died upon the cross because somebody's got to pay for your sins. We do that by faith. We don't have to be nailed to the cross. We don't have to drag ourselves across the parking lot and get bloody and bruised and look like that. You know, the great thing is, because that perfect lamb was sacrificed, I have an entryway into heaven.
I have a relationship with God. So yeah, we're saved by the blood, but I'm saved by the substitute, the perfect lamb of God that was given for my sins. It's my challenge to you today. If you don't know that, by faith, this Easter can be totally different. You can look upon the cross differently because you go, it's because of Jesus. And here's the, the thing that you do in your own life. A lot of times, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you'll sit there and wonder, how will I be accepted by God? And we come up with all kind of ways that we think we can be accepted by God. There's really only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died upon the cross for us to pay for our sins. The only entry into heaven is those who know him by faith. Those who understand that when he was lifted up, he's going to draw all men unto himself. Those that understand he is that type and that shadow in the Old Testament of all those things that we see in the Old Testament that was pointing to the substitute that's come. So I challenge you today, if you don't know Jesus, you pray a prayer and you ask the Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. May I know you. I believe you died upon the cross for my sins. There's nothing I can do to pay for them, but you died on the cross for my sins. I need that peace with you because I have worked so hard to find that peace, and I don't have it. Then you become a Christian by faith in the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for me. He paid for our sins through his death. And the death angel will pass over you. And John, the fifth chapter says, those who believe in him have already passed over from death to life just in that belief. For those of you that are Christians, this week is one of the most, it's one of the greatest weeks we have in the Christian Cali, even better than Christmas. I know Christmas has its own magical part of it, of knowing Jesus came to this world, but this week is that message that Jesus died on the cross for all of mankind, for anyone who believes. He is that lamb to be shared with your neighbor, to let them know that the blood is what saves. His death is what saved us. We're going to close out this time in prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. We don't have the music. We're fine. As we close out this time in prayer, I'll just invite you, if you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, today would be a good day to do that. You see the, the story the kids put on. The message of the cross is still echoing over all this time, and it is still there that Jesus Christ is truly our substitute in death. You don't have to die. You don't have to die alone. You can live forever with Christ. But it takes that asking Jesus Christ by faith to come into your heart. Let's pray. Father, I just ask you for every person standing here today as a born-again believer. And Lord, if anyone is here today that does not know you, I ask you to reveal yourself to them. Allow your understanding just by the power of your Holy Spirit to come to them, that they need a Savior, they need someone, and they are not able and capable to face death and to win over death, but you have won victoriously over death because it could not hold you. And Lord, I thank you for the blessing the death angel has to pass over those who believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. We thank you for the substitution that you've done for us that we do not have to pay for our sins. And I ask you, Father God, just let that be a revelation. And Lord, I ask you also for those of us that are Christians here today, let this week be that most excited week that we have this year so far that we share with those around us about the blood of Jesus and how it has saved us, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God but it is because of your richness and mercy and grace towards us that you have given us a new life. And I thank you for that, Father. Thank you for the substitute that was the perfect Lamb of God to be sacrificed for our sins. We ask you, Lord God, that you just bless each person here. Thank you for our kids that displayed this today, our young people that participated. And I ask you, Father God, for your blessing upon your message. And Lord, we ask you for just a blessed day as we go in this, from this place to the next and have a meal. May we fellowship around the table in a sweet fellowship. We thank you for that, Father. In the name of Jesus.
Amen. Give you a quick